Welcome to Samster Games, the place to find new strategy games and today it's time to take command because we're going to be playing Unity of Command 2. Now this game's come out on the 12th of November but I was lucky enough to get a pre-release version so big thank you to the developers for that. And we're going to start a new game, Victory in the West. After three dark years of countless disasters at the hands of the Axis power, the fortunes of war seem to have turned. In the North Africa, Commonwealth forces have advanced 2,000 kilometers since the battles of El Alamein. Meanwhile, green American troops have recovered their ordeals at Kasserine Pass. And so long, the march to Berlin begins. Alright, so we can pick a difficulty. We're going to be playing on normal. We're going to erase our campaign and let's go. 1943 Europe. February 2nd, 1943, German 6th Army surrenders. Soviet takes 91,000 prisoners and continues striking west. February and March 1943, German evacuate West Salian and strike back near Kharkov. The Eastern Front stabilizes. March April 1943, British 8th Army breaks the Mart Line. Reorganized after Castle and Allies forces strike from the east. The final battle in North Africa begins. All right. Victory in the best. You're hereby designated Supreme Allied Commander. You will enter the continent of Europe and in conjunction with the other United Nations undertake operations aimed at the heart of Nazi Germany and her allies. All right. So this thing is random. These cards. This What we're equipped at is a conference and we're essentially deciding what we want to equip, let's say, for the battle. So the cards that you get are random, like I said, we get Ultra Intelligence for free, remove the fog of war during a pleasure, wowza, this is pretty amazing, I didn't get this in my test game, but this is like epicness, okay, we'll take Ultra Intelligence, yes, please, really got to think about on which term we want to use it, and then you can buy other things for prestige, we have 150 prestige, this thing on the left, the number in green tells you how much it costs, and the thing on the right is like recoup price. So these B26 things are really good. It gives you plus one per turn to air attack theater assets. So we can do one more, one airstrike every turn. So we're definitely going to take it. I might even take it twice. What do we've got here? Naval, at plus three uses to naval one bomb and asset. Card costs 45 prestige to buy. It's not really good for us in this particular map. So I think I'm just going to take three of these airstrikes and that's it. And then you could also upgrade your HQ and do stuff like that. Over here, we're currently not going to do that. So we'll just grab the cards and let's go. We're going to end the conference. And we're going to pick our first battle, which is going to be here at the Vadi Accurate. While well, US forces have been halted near E1 Guitar in Magna City, the British 8th Army has broken through the Marat defensive line. Only the Vadi Accurate stands in the way of Montgomery's forces breaking into open terrain. In the air, the Allies have gained the upper hand, and at sea, precious few Axis supply ships arrive intact in Tunisia. So let's start this scenario. Let's go. I'm so excited for this. This game is very complex. So you've kind of got to bear with me because there's going to be a lot of explaining. But this game is worth it. Our forces are converging toward a link up in central Tunisia. U.S. 2nd Corps and British 1st Army are to try and force the passes of eastern Dorsal range and then cut off the axis of retreat from Vadi Akari. Be wary of overextending your forces, though. At this stage, indeed, this world where there's no need for unnecessary risk. Like, yeah, go and do it. Just relax. All right, so the blue guys are the enemy. We are the yellow guys. Now, this little line separates who controls what area. This is important where it comes to supply zone. Now, supply zones are very important because, for example, if you manage to stop your enemy from being supplied a unit of your enemy for two consecutive turns, they do not get to their action point. So that means they cannot attack you, which is kind of awesome. Now, on the right top here, we can see our um, objectives. We are supposed to get Sfax in turn 4, and Enfidadville in turn 7, Fonduk Pass in turn 3, Magnasi Pass in turn 3 or less. It's always or less. Fate Pass on turn 4 and Karyon on turn 5. So the first thing we're supposed to get is Fonduk Pass and Magnasi Pass, which is this and this. So that's something that we want to focus on when we are fighting. Now we're currently at a prepare for battle stage, which means I cannot actually move my units yet. Instead, this is a place where you can, for example, move your HQ around. So we have a British 8th Army HQ here. We have US 2nd Corps Army here. 
and we uh, HQ, sorry, not army, and British First Army HQ over here. Now, the this is pretty important because different HQ gives you like extra points, and you, you need your units need to be in range of that to be able to utilize the points, and they're really really important in combat. So we're gonna talk about a little bit more about that later. So right now we can just start. We're not gonna be moving our HQ, but you could move them around a little bit if you wanted to, not too much, but a little bit. Okay, so this is our first turn, and we can begin. So we can click on units and tell them to do stuff, but before we do, I need to kind of explain to you how the units work. So when you look at a unit, you can see these little dots over here. Let me click on an enemy unit so I can show you. So these little dots, they're colored yellow or blue. Now these represent, these are called steps, and they represent sort of like the manpower and equipment of a unit. Okay, so they can see, for example, this Italian infantry ha has five. My unit over here also has five, but for example, this, this tank over here, German, Pencil Grenadier only has three. And um, the, the way that attack, the combat works essentially is that you multiply your attack value with the amount of active steps. This is a step, remember? And the, the, the defender does as well. And then you sort of compare the ratio. For example, you can have like, I don't know, 20 for the attack and let's say 15 for the defender, so that's a four to three ratio. And then based on that, there's actually a table that tells you like how much damage it does. Now you don't have to worry about that in practice because if I wanna attack, I can just click on myself and then hover over the enemy, which is gonna tell you what kind of damage is that going to do. So for example, over here, I can see that the left thing is always how much damage they do to you because there's always like fighting both at the same time. So it's not like you only hurt them as always like, defense so in this case they would do zero damage to me and i would do two damage to them but for example if i click on these guys here it would be one to one or if i attack these people with this unit they would actually hit me for three and i would hit them for zero now when you're fighting an enemy unit you can either kill their units or suppress their units so if you kill them then the this sort of like dot or step disappears let me just click on enemy units so I don't accidentally move myself. This will, uh, if you kill them, it just disappears. Or you can suppress it, which means that it turns gray. And that is still important because they cannot defend or attack with them because they're like kind of, I don't know, injured or not doing something, so they're suppressed. So what you want to do is you want to try to sort of kill or suppress enemy units. Now this game also has something called stragglers, which is like uh, if you injure a unit, enough like destroyed essentially you have some like leftover people are sort of like you know running away and then you can take them prisoner and stuff like that so first thing we're going to do is we want to attack so what i like to do in this game is because um like i said the supply is really powerful what i like to do is try to focus on cutting off some of their supplies so you can click v on your keyboard it's going to tell you where you are supplied or not so this white thing means you're sub supplied in that area and this red means you're not and if you click B on your keyboard, you can see the same for the enemy. So you can see it's currently supplied everywhere. Now supply man goes from the rails. So you can see this is kind of the main area. And this is sort of like special hubs. If you step on the hubs, you can sort of take, take that off. There's supply man. And you can also sort of resupply your unit. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get to over here, possibly to over there or to here to sort of unsupply them. So let's start doing some stuff, okay? So I can click on this, these guys and they can actually attack and do some nice damage without getting hurt. So we're going to do that as well. We're going to start off by attacking, I think these guys over here. So let's hit them for two. Each unit has a one attack action and movement. And then it also has extended movement, which is this sort of like a blue thing. So uh, sometimes you can, if you, if for example, right now I have only attack and I haven't moved, so I can still do some additional movement. However, after this, I will not be able to attack the enemy. Now, I don't know yet where I want to move, so I'm going to wait. Then I'm going to click on this and, I, uh, sorry, that's an enemy tank. It looks kind of yellow so I was thinking it's mine, but it's not. It's an enemy tank. So I could move my tank over here and completely destroy this unit. So let's try to do that. Great, so we got overrun. It said overrun. Now, overrun is super important because overrun means that you... I think the like similarity in real life, like my guess, is that essentially you're sending your guys to attack the enemy, but the enemy is so scared or disoriented they're actually running away. So you and you know like disbanding and stuff. So you don't. So your soldiers didn't really need to do anything. So they still have the energy to stuff. But what it means in practice in the game is that you get one additional attack. So even though I've already used up my attack and normally I just get one, I can still hit some of these guys. So I could, for example, shoot at this thing now this is one one 
So we want to kind of want to think about whether that's something that we actually want to do or not. Let me just check. This is one one three zero. If I move this tank, also only one one. Interesting. This would actually be really bad because they guys could hurt my tank even worse. So I think. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's grab. We're gonna grab some prisoners because we managed to step on where they are. Let's let's hit these guys with one one. We actually managed to kill off one of their units, which is quite nice. And we're gonna do the same over here. While they only suppressed mine, I managed to kill theirs, which is very good. Now these guys, could you move close enough to attack? You can't. Now, unfortunately, I cannot move this thing anymore or this one, uh, but I can move some of the others. I could move to. Let me move these guys over. They're going to be kind of out in the open, but I'm going to take the risk and do it anyway. Okay, one, one, three, three. I can't really move to here to attack, which is a bit unfortunate. So when it comes to movement, you can click on people and you have certain like amount of movement points. And uh, the way this works is that... Um, each, if you click T, which is terrain, you can see what type of terrains you have on different parts. And terrains give you different bonuses when you're attacking or defending, but also cause different movement points to move there. So you can, for example, see that I have... Yeah, so so if you hover over this, it's going to tell you like how many movement points am I going to have left after this movement. So what I'm going to do here is, if you look at this, these guys, if I try to hit one of these, they're just going to, especially this one, they're just going to hurt me and I wouldn't really be able to do any damage to them. Same if I move with these guys or these guys. So I want to fix that, right? So I'm going to move with, actually I'm not going to move, I'm going to use these guys. And I can use some sort of special attacks. Now in order to use a special attack, you're using your sort of HQ points. This is currently the closest HQ is the British 8th Army. And they belong to the British infantry, so they can use these HQ points. So I have six of them. And I can use them up between any units. They're just like for the HQ. On the enemies to try to do stuff. So for example, a really cool thing here is the set piece attack. And what this does is it allows me to suppress... Oh, sorry, not, not this one. Okay, so this so what this this doesn't actually allow me to, to um, suppress their units, but allows me to lower their entrenchment. Entrenchment increases their defense, so I could do that and try to lower that. Or I could pick, for example, a faint attack, which lowers one suppression. So so their sort of steps, these little blue thing, one of them would be gray. So then when I attack them with a different unit, I'm going to have a better chance of doing more damage. So I could do one suppression to each one of these. Or I could try suppressive fire. Oh, this is going to do two suppressions. So let's do this. And 25% chance to reduce their entrenchment. So let's try to use it on these guys. Oh, that was actually really good. So this suppressed a lot of their units. So now, let me not move here. If I use, for example, this person. Now before, it would do a lot of damage to me. But now, now it still does damage to me, but not as much. So for example, these guys could actually suppress them completely. Which is actually, I killed off one of their units, which is even better. So that was that was a pretty good move. So you want to utilize things like okay, and now if these guys move in, previously they would hit me for one, but now I can hit them for one. So it goes, and they're actually running away because they're scared. Which allows me to move some of my other units over here. Now I don't want to attack because I would just get hurt, but I could use a faint attack, which would again lower their suppression a little bit. So one seventy percent chance to lower one suppression. To suppress one of the um, steps and 30% chance to do two. This is one with 100%. So let's just do one on. Okay. And I can't really move away. These guys could move away. Yeah, and we could let the tank move forward. And we can do one one. And anybody else? This guy could move that as well and get one one if you wanted to. So let's do it. I'm gonna move this tank backwards so the other tank can move over there. There we go. Okay, we did a pretty good hit. And finally, anybody else who could move in position? Not really. Oh, these guys can move, but okay, so I think we're done over here. 
We did what we could. We're trying to get towards that, but we'll see. Now, up on turn two, we need to take over this, so we definitely want to start attacking. So I'm going to grab my tank here and move towards them. I can hit them for two, so I definitely want to do it. And then these guys could do 1-1 one, one instead of the 3-0 that it was before. Now, because this, this is British First Army, so this is actually a different HQ. This is this one. So we could use the fin attack, but it's not really worth it. So I'm just going to attack them straight up. Okay, so they ran away. And I could move forward. Now, I'm going to move. This is a little bit of a risky thing. But first of all, we took over the Fate Pass because we moved through it. And so we, we could use one of these if we wanted to, which we'll do. So we're going to use... Actually, no, let me click. We, we can do it later. The reason why I'm moving here is because I want to take over this thing to stop their units from being supplied. Because that would be really, really helpful for us. So we're trying to get a move in that direction. Also, we have some prisoners here, so I want to take them as soon as possible. And unfortunately, that means we're a little bit open over here. So they could try to get in and, you know... Do the same thing for us, ruin our supply power, but we're going to hope that they won't. Also, important point is the zone of control around units. So essentially what the what you can do is you can kind of move like through a unit, like you can like bypass them completely. If you step next to unit, you have to stand there. Just important. So we're kind of like blocking them from going straight through there. Like the, these guys, they can just like run through. That's something to watch out for. Now here, you can see that this is a very bad position for us because if you try to hit them, they'll just hurt us. So this is a good time to, again, use feint attack or set piece attacks. This would lower their entrenchment by two. Or feint attack would lower their suppression by one. Or we could do suppressive fire. Ooh, lowers their suppression by two. Right that. I guess we'll do this. Oh, by three even. That was even better. Now, if somebody else could attack them, that would be nice. But we've got nobody else to actually go and hit them up. So they won't be able to do much uh, damage to us, which is always good. Now, I'm going to move these guys to over here and try to... Now, we can actually do the suppressive fire because we moved. So all of these have kind of requirements. Sometimes you can move, sometimes you can. But we could use a faint attack to a lower suppression of this, for example. We can move around, but I don't think I want to. Four damage, two damage like this, that's a very bad idea. And we have no more points for the British Army. So I'm going to move. If, if we had a ba mountains, we get a bit, nah, we're going to stay where we are. But we have one more point. So what you can do here is you can essentially reorganize your units and that means that that one leftover points that i have for the british first army i can't use it right now but maybe next turn i could so i'm going to reorganize into we need to pick something that's compatible with the british army ideally so that's for example the Cree f17 pounder so let's do it and this means that we kind of take this point get it to zero but next turn we can activate it and use it now we should also make sure that we are using this these sort of um airstrike attacks so i'm going to use all of these cards because they give me plus one air attack percent i'm not going to use the ultra intelligence because we don't need that yet just yet or this so now we have four airstrikes per turn so what we want to do here is i think we're going to need some help over here because we're doing fairly okay down here i think but this seems like a place where they could do a lot of damage so let me try to attack these guys up in the front we destroyed completely their suppression. Could we kill them? The airstrike? We could try. Or we could, or, you know what, let, let's go on these guys because they have a lot of suppression points. We aren't really doing much damage to them though. Now eh, we'll try again, it's fine. Oh, they didn't even lower their suppression at all. So let's try to attack somebody else then. Uh, I mean, didn't suppress any of their steps. No, neither did here. Is there for well hidden in the mountains? Oh well, never mind. So I think these oh these guys can still attack. But we don't want to because they would just hurt us. We're not gonna do anything there. And oh we haven't really played here yet. Okay. So you can see this little arrow, and that means that you still have like movement and uh stuff action. So we could do one one here. We have four points for the US Corp. So we could do suppressive fire. This is like one one three one. You've got one one 
one one and you've got so yeah so so somebody is gonna need to do suppressive fire so let's do let's do suppressive fire from these guys because we have a pretty good defense be, by being in the mountain so it's a good idea for us to use that let's use it on this guy minus two suppression Ooh, and now we can actually hit them without hurting ourselves so i think that's a really good idea so let's do it we breached you can move to here And then we'll use suppressive fire on one of these. It would otherwise just get hurt, so it's ineffective. And I'm gonna move these guys into the mountain because that's gonna give me some nice uh, protection. And these guys could move, but I think we're just gonna let them stay where they are. All right, that seems like that's it. So we are simply going to end our turn. Okay, let the enemy go. We took the fight pass, which is good. We needed that, but we still have one one more the the fondue pass that we need to take very soon. Okay, they're doing some airstrikes on their own. They're not really hitting us. They're mostly running away, which is good. Yeah, there's... Okay, so uh, okay, this tank is important. I'm gonna talk about it in a second. That tank is has the this little red. Exclamation point next to it, and that means if you click B, uh, that means it's out of supply for one turn. So if you manage to make it out of supply for two turns, it won't be able to attack. It's, it will only be able to move. So this is something you really want to watch out for and try to utilize as much as you can. So if I click on B, you can see that this is uh, unsupplied. Uh, if it stays where it is right now, it's going to be uh, supplied next turn. Now, they also have um, sort of like a supply area over here. So if we, oh, and here, yeah, sorry, sorry, let me click B again. I can take over this, which means, first of all, that they won't be able to supply that much around it. But it also means that all of your units will be re re on this place or around it will be resupplied. So you only want to step on it when you have some things around it. Usually, not, not immediately. So first, let's grab my tank. Ooh, we could insta kill these guys. Could you insta kill them as well? No, you just hurt yourself. So we're gonna move from behind with this tank and insta kill these guys. We get over round so we can attack again, which is perfect. So we can then attack these guys for one one though. This is a four one. That's really really bad. Did you do better? But we do get points, so we could or we could you know let's try using an air strike on these guys. That could work. Seriously, that didn't do any damage? Okay. That's disappointing. We could move to here and use... But what would we use? We could use a faint attack on these guys. Lower their suppression by one and then try to think. It's still going to be one one though. I guess we'll do it. And then these guys could get one one as well. Okay, they, they, they moved away and one of my units moved through. No, this, no, okay. So, so next time we're going to try to move through that. Possible. Now, we are open here. This is really bad because they can move and, and take over my uh, power supply. So we're going to have to move at least here. And I guess we could use faint attack on those guys. Not really that necessary, but like we'll try. And I'm thinking we're going to move these guys forward just to protect this power supply because that's pretty important. Now we could deploy the unit that we had to get that one point that we saved up previously. But one point isn't going to give us anything so that there's really no point to it. So we're going to end the episode here because there's no way we can finish the map in any reasonable time. But uh, we're definitely going to do a lot more episodes for this game so stay tuned for that. And you can click on the right bottom now to watch. Feel of Glory Empires. See you there. Bye-bye.